operation of taking a row and adding a multiple of another row. Okay, so we're adding a negative multiple, that multiple being negative one, or in other words, subtracting one row from another. Okay, so subtracting one row from another is allowed. Okay, so the next operation is to take row two and subtract row one from it. Okay, that gives row one stays the same. Six minus six leaves zero. Eight minus three leaves a five. 30 minus 15 leaves 15. Okay, so there was only one entry to clear. Um, was the um, one below the six. Uh, the next ex entry that we want to clear is this three. Okay, so what we're going to do first to simplify things, uh, well, we want to take row one and subtract some multiple of row two from it. Um, if this 5 were a 1, that would be convenient because then we could simply subtract a, a constant multiple of the second row from the first. So I'm going to take row 2 and I'm going to divide it by 5 or multiply it by 1 over 5. Let me be consistent with my colors. Okay. So take row 2 and take 1 -fifth of that. And that's going to leave us with, again, row 1 doesn't change at this stage, 15. This is setting us up for the next step, 1, 3. Okay. And I'm going to erase what's up here. Um, okay, we'll leave the system of equations there for reference. Okay, so what we get, we have this matrix here. Now we want to take, we want to clear this 3. So we take row 1 and we subtract 3 times row 2. Again, let me be consistent with the coloring. Row 1, subtract 3, row 2. Okay. And we get 6 minus any multiple of 0 just leaves 6. 3 minus 3 times 1 is a 0. 15 minus 3 times 15, so subtract 9 from 15, that's going to leave a 6. Um, what do we have on bottom? 0, 1, 3, again. Okay, and now we have the form we like because we have a diagonal of 1s. Uh, not, well, not quite yet. We have a diagonal of numbers with zeros, only zeros above and below them. So that's, that's the goal here. What I want to do next is to simplify the top row so that the first non-zero entry in the row, which is this 6 here, is actually a 1. So this is what I meant by leading 1s. Okay, So what I can do is take row 1 and divide it by 6 or multiply it by uh, 1 over 6. Okay, Giving 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 3. Okay, so now we have this matrix which is in what's called uh, row reduced echelon form. So that means that any leading ones, so I don't want to get into the definition explicitly because again that's for another video, um, but what this means is that we have a diagonal of ones with zeros uh, above and, and below those ones, roughly, roughly speaking. Okay, so let's take this augmented matrix that we've obtained by row reduction and see what this tells us about the solutions. So what we get here, I'm going to rewrite what I have. This is how you read the solutions from the, uh, from the row reduced matrix. Okay, so we have X and Y columns here. Okay. So what this says is that X equals 1 and Y equals 3. Okay, and that's the solution to the system of equations above. 
Okay, we, we had this solution already through substitution, so we know it's correct. Okay, um, so next I want to talk about inverse matrices. I'm going to erase the, uh, actually not quite yet. Let me rewrite the equation we had before. Okay, so the equation we had, the matrix equation, was AX equals B, where A was, get this over here, A was what's sometimes called the coefficient matrix, so we get 2, 1, 3, 4. X is the solution set. Okay, the numbers we're looking for. And B are the constants of 5, 15. Okay, um, so an inverse matrix is a matrix with the following property. So the inverse to A, okay, denoted by A inverse has the following properties. Okay, let me erase what's on the right here. So the properties are 1, A times A inverse is the identity matrix, and 2, A inverse times A is the identity matrix. So it's necessary to, to make, make these two conditions because, generally speaking, uh, matrix multiplication is not what's called commutative, meaning the order that you multiply them in general matters. So for two matrices A and B, A times B might be different than B times A. Okay, so we need the two conditions here. Um, so how does that help us with our equation here? Well, we're trying to find B. What if we knew A inverse? Say we knew A inverse and its entries. Then what we could do is perform a matrix multiplication on both sides of this equation. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation on the left. So again, I say on the left because the order that you multiply matrices um, is relevant. Okay, and I would get this. So it's just taking two matrix uh, matrices and, and multiplying them by, by a given matrix. And now we have the property that A inverse times A, property 2 here, is the identity matrix. So we get the identity matrix times X is A inverse times B. And the identity matrix, by definition, it, it multiplied by any other matrix just gives the matrix itself. So we have X equals A inverse times B. So what does this tell us? Well, if we somehow knew A inverse and its entries, we could take that matrix, multiply it by B, which is just a routine matter of matrix multiplication, and obtain the solution X. X is what we're looking for. So this means finding the solution to this system of equations amounts to finding the inverse to the coefficient matrix. So I'll show you how to do this. Getting the inverse um, involves row reduction as well, in fact. So in this case, we, we aren't doing any less work by using this method. But the, the inverse itself has, has many other useful, useful properties. So it's, it's certainly necessary and worthwhile to know how to, how to get the matrix, the inverse to a matrix, rather. OK, so here's the procedure. Take the coefficient matrix of your system. And beside it, again separated by a vertical line, put the identity matrix. Now what we're going to do is row reduce using the row operations we saw before um, to make what's to the left hand side of this vertical bar the identity matrix. And then we'll see what's on the right hand side. Okay, so we're going to do the row operations across across the bar. Okay. 
So we saw how to do this before. The first step is to multiply the top row by 3.